bring out the fields thereby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of God shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Jesus the Lord, hallelujah. Oh, there it is. If you all want to stand up and we to pray God, we're going to open up the prayer. The Holy Spirit showed me this moment, and um, as you guys know, uh, this is this is what's happening right now in heaven. Can you imagine that right now in heaven, all all of heaven? I want you to picture this at the throne room of our heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Hallelujah, the Father, Holy Spirit. In the middle of the throne, the creatures are right there, surrounding the throne, elders. And all of heaven right now, say this with me, church, and say, holy, holy, holy. Oh, holy, It's the Lord God Almighty. Lord God Almighty. Who, was, who was. Who is. Who is, who is to come. Who is God. Worthy, Worthy is the Lamb, the Lamb who, was who was slain. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is Lord. Is Lord. Let's say it together, Merry Christmas. Merry Hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all make me see the praise God. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, glory to God. I'm so thankful y'all came out for this special, special occasion. Amen. So what Christmas means to me, and, you know, for some of years, Pastor, myself, for those of you in the ministry, you know, we're, we're so honored and blessed. We're not worthy to stand here before you. We just worship just like you. Can you get an amen? amen? And this is such a special day because, of course, Christmas, right? Christmas. Christmas. Amen. And when you think about Christmas, what it means to me is I'm just going to be plain and simple. Say this with me. Gifts. Yes. Now before some of you that are really religious right now that got kind of crunchy, let go of that. Amen. Amen. Don't get so serious right away. All right? But I'm just telling you right now what it means to me is gifts. Amen. And I'm taking this from, if you ask any child, right? Don't you love children? They'll lie. You ask them how they're feeling, they're going to tell you how they feel. You ask them what Christmas means, they're going to say, gifts, presents, right? And we're going to move forward in this worship service, and I pray that this blesses you as we, as, as we just bless the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to make everyone aware that we are having communion this evening, and this is a candlelight service. Say that with me, candlelight. Candlelight. And it's a very intimate service. All of our worship service is... But as you know, being Christmas, it's a special, amen, to our Father God. So I ask you, be a part of this worship service, amen? Don't come and just be like, mm, I just can't wait till they get this over with, right? Be a part of this worship service. Engage, amen? Worship, hallelujah. God is head over heels in love with you. Jesus Christ is Lord. You're never going to hell. Can I get amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. I love how the Apostle Paul wrote this to the church of Corinth. And when he said this, he was talking, he was referring to the gift of God. Wrapped in skin, the perfect one, the holy one. His name is, Brother Taylor, Lord Jesus Christ. And this Lord Jesus Christ, just thinking, just thinking of my Lord Jesus overwhelms me. 
just thinking of a God that knowing what he was to face, however many years later, he said, let there be light. Knowing, knowing. Can you imagine my beloved church family? Being God Almighty, before this was ever created, anything in this world, Lord Jesus Christ knew what he would face if he spoke, let there be light. But by the grace and mercy of our God, he still spoke. You know why? Because you are worth it. Amen. Amen. God saw, God saw that one day you will be worshiping him. One day you will be blessing him. One day you will be living in and through you. And the gifts of God will be flowing through your life unimaginable. Amen. I love to say, if you hear me say, oh, that's uncomprehendable. Right? It's beyond your worship life. It's beyond scriptures. It's beyond anything you could possibly imagine. Why? Because he is God Almighty and he is flowing through your life. Amen. Amen. Say it with me. Hallelujah. Beloved church. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Indescribable gifts. Let's get right into this. Praise God. You're in for a huge surprise. Now I love this moment. There's going to be some parts of this worship service where there's going to, it's going to trigger some thoughts. And praise God's going to be godly thoughts. Amen? Amen? But don't you love as far as when somebody's giving a gift, when someone's giving a gift, they know what's in the gift. Can you hear an amen? amen. They know what's in it, right? you got a package, and I know what's in it, and I'm wrapped it up, and I'm giving it to my beloved wife. I'm full of anticipation and excitement because I know that, oh, you're going to open it, and you're going to love it. Right? And then you're going to love it because I know what the gift is. Because I purchased the gift. Amen? I, 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 I research and I know exactly what is going to blow her away. And I know because if there's anticipation because of preparation of this gift, hallelujah, that I know when I hand it to her, she's going to be like, wow. Right? Praise God. And tonight, God Almighty wants to give you a gift. You're in for a huge surprise. Say it. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Say it. Amen. Praise God. Let's get right into this. Praise God. You talk about this gift. You got the little gift right there. And of course, we just discussed it. Indescribable gift. The gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God wrapped him up real nice, real handsome, real perfect in that skin. Amen. Amen. 100% man, left everything, laid it all down for us. Come here through a virgin birth, amen? As we just read through the scriptures, we heard it, amen? Indescribable gift. So we know that this gift is Lord Jesus Christ. And as you can see in this picture, in this overhead, you have the different scenes in the gospels, in the various gospels, of how this gift of God blessed every soul that was receptive just to be there and say, help me. Can we say that together as a church family on the count of three unto our God? And when I say count of three, when I say three, I'm going to ask you from the Holy of Holies, digging deep within, can you say it unto God Almighty, help me? One, two, three. No. And the beauty of this gift is that every soul you see here on the picture, on many of these screens right here, you see the lady with the issue of blood for 12 years. You see the lady that was caught in adultery and how she was treated like a piece of garbage. And that the religious people just drug her. I can imagine it because Holy Spirit showed me they drug her by the hair. Right, Pastor? They drug her. And there's no other, there's no other telling what took place because they would beat you. They would beat you back then. And could you imagine this, this poor beloved daughter of God just being drunk because she was caught doing something wrong. Can I, am I the only one that's been caught doing something wrong? How many of you here have been caught doing something wrong? Amen. So does anyone here have the right to throw that rock? No. Amen. No. And the glory of God in this picture, when she approached, she was thrown down at the feet of God. And you guys know the story. God said, Whoever has no sin, go on and throw up the first stone. But the beauty of the story is, 
Sarge, he had no sin. And he didn't pick up the stone. He didn't throw it at him. And you see the other pictures of the friend that carried their friend through the roof? Oh, come on, beloved church family. I am so thankful to be rooted here in Open Arms Community Church, to be surrounded by brothers and sisters that I know if I need to go see Jesus, they're going to take me up on that roof. They're going to pull off the tiles. They're going to cut the tin roof off. And they're going to take me down and say, we need to see Jesus. Can I get in there? Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, we don't stop. We're not going to stop. In Jesus' name, say with me, I'm not going to stop. How do we say good or Merry Christmas? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you know Christmas means more Christ, right? Amen. Amen. Moss, right? Moss. Moss, welcome, Molly. Moss chips for the Lord, right? Yeah, my Spanish is fluent, huh? Huh? Moss burrito, whatever, right? Moss, more, right? More, more Jesus. Amen. And I love more Jesus. You see this, 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 this other picture right here? When the blind was able to see. Amen. And that's what we're praying for. But all these gifts, all these gifts that Lord Jesus Christ put out was every miracle and every blessing, every breakthrough, every deliverance. Hallelujah. There's not one demon that can stand in the presence of our God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is the ordinance. Hallelujah. But we got all the ornaments there. Don't be sad. Don't, don't be sad, right? How much does God love you? How much does God love you, beloved church? Hallelujah. One time, Trisha and I, I don't know how long it was in the house, but we were like kids. I'm like, God loves me more than you. She's like, no, God loves me more than you. No, God loves me more than you. No, God loves me more than you. God loves me more. Than you. you know, it's just me more, me more. May I ask you, beloved church, was this for you? Amen. You see, we all have a choice. This could be intimate with you and God Almighty, where you could be his beloved child. And right now, tonight, you could say, Merry Christmas, Father. That was exactly for me. Amen. That wasn't for another soul, but for me. And I'm going to live my life. I'm going to live my life. Completely surrendered to you, Lord Jesus. So that Holy Spirit, your life, your life would live abundantly through me. Amen. Amen. Indescribable gift. Hallelujah. And I love this because you can see the that rhythm, right? You can see that rhythm. And those red ribbons remind me of the stripes that Lord Jesus Christ bore. And of course, he put that on the tree. But yet again, there's nothing to hold it together. But don't be sad. Right? We're not done yet. God is not done yet with you. Amen? Amen. What is God's view and opinion of me? How does God see you? As you sit here, beloved, no matter what you're going through in this vapor of a life, on this Christmas day, how does God view you? Do you see God as a God that he's mad at you? Do you see God as a God that he's disappointed you? Do you see God as a God that he's judging you right now? Or that he's waiting for you to mess up and he's going to smack you? May I confess you, I grew up in that. I grew up in that. And even as an adult getting into ministry, I started to get crunchy. And when I say I started to get crunchy, I started thinking that maybe you are mad at me. Because guess what? In the fellowship that I would open myself up to was people that did not open themselves to the Holy Spirit and it was just head knowledge of the Bible of God, right? The Holy Bible. You see, when we get caught up, when we get caught up in dragging God down into our limitation of our mind, it's a dangerous game to play. 
Because what God wants, this is why he gave us Christ, and this is why we have Christmas. What God wants for me, 100%, is faith. But when we try to figure God out, right? When we try to figure God out, that's when the devil says, all right. Yeah, you know what? Forget about faith. Try to figure it out. Can you say with me, no more? No, no more. If you could look in Jesus' eyes as he was being nailed to this cross, can you imagine this very moment when those nails were being driven? What was God's view and opinion of you? You see, the amazing thing about blood, I don't know if you know this about blood, but when there's a lot of blood, I've been, I've been around a lot of blood, and when there's puddles of blood, it's like oil almost. And the way this blood acts as is it's actually a reflection. And I love it because I brought this and for such a time as this, I bought this at, at Goodwill. But it's, it's a, I could have cleaned it, sorry. But as I stare into it, I can actually see my reflection. And this is what God is asking of you right now when you look at all that blood that was on Lord Jesus Christ. Do you see your reflection? Do you see the price that was paid for your salvation? Do you see your worth? You see, this world will want to tell you that you're worth nothing. That you grew up in this last name, or that you've done this and done that, and you're never going to amount to nothing. May I tell you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the devil is a liar. Hey. Amen? The devil is a liar. You are a beloved child of God and you have Jesus Christ as Lord and the presence of God lives in you. And it was because of this blood that was shed for you. We are covered by the new covenant. Amen? Amen. Say it with me, new covenant. new covenant. What is that new covenant? It was God's blood that was spilled through his perfect sacrifice, Lord Jesus Christ, on that cross. And I love this because these red ornaments, like you just saw, are so beautiful, and it reminds me when I see it on a Christmas tree. The blood. Say that we need the blood. The blood. Of Lord Jesus Christ. Of Lord Jesus Christ. But still, we didn't, we didn't keep that all together. So how can God pick up the pieces and hold me together? How can God pick up the pieces of my life? How can God pick up my brokenness and turn it into beauty? How can God take Someone that has been abused, tormented, someone that has just been run down, someone that has been locked up, someone that has done the most horrible of horrible things, someone that does not know how to act, someone that comes from a broken family, someone that has failed time and time and time again. How can God use me? Can you say his name with me? Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. The way God kept everything together is through, as you guys know, the tree. No, not this tree. Amen. Amen. That tree. Amen. That tree. Hallelujah. Wherever your life is right now on this Christmas day, wherever your marriage is, whatever is going on, whatever the enemy has tried to deceive you in and tell you, look, it's a dead end. Look, everything is falling Look, there's nothing that's going to take place. Nothing's going to work out. You've been having faith. You've been praying all this time. You've been doing this. You've been doing that. That is when you speak to the devil and you say, I rebuke you, Satan. Jesus Christ is my faith. And my faith shall be there. Amen. The indescribable gift that we saw the stripes that he bore 
from which I tell you that it reminds me of the red ribbon that I see on all these beautiful Christmas trees that I've seen already. And then you see the blood in his open wounds. And of course, you see the miracles that he performed through his blood. I ask you, beloved church family, that as we move forward through this worship service, we're going to be taking communion here shortly. And as you can see, we got the gift of Lord Jesus Christ. We got the miracles. We got the red ribbons, the stripes. We got the ornaments, the blood. And praise God, now we got the Christmas tree. Amen? Amen. You see, everything comes together, right? And now, glory to God, beloved church family, we have our Christmas tree. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen. Amen. We have our Christmas tree. Hallelujah. But you know, here at Open Arms Community Church, you guys know, it just gets gooder and gooder. And uh, just keep us in prayer because we can barely keep up. Amen? Amen? Listen, it's all Holy Spirit. We just be obedient, right? Amen. I'm going to ask you to bless God and do me a favor. Just blow on this graphic. Just blow out the candle. What happens now if you blow out and turn out the lights? So there's still something missing. Bless you. There's still something missing. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 15 says, you are, say with me, I am. I am. Say it like you want to shake heaven, because when you say those two words, you are calling on God Almighty. And I command you to say it with reverence. And I'm going to ask you, what, did he just say command? Yes, I did. Say it with reverence. Because when you say, I am, right there, God Almighty. Amen? Amen? So say it again on the count of three. One, two, three. I am! I was really hoping for that trumpet to go off right now. <laughs> I mean, you, guys know, you guys know I was really hoping. Praise God. This is what it says. You are the light of the world. Can I get an amen? amen. And now the thing there. You are the light of the world. Here, Brother Jesus Christ is speaking to us right now. You are the light of the world. You are the light. This is us, beloved church family. This is us. Lighting it up. Lighting up the whole world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And so you see, you have Lord Jesus Christ, you have the ornaments. Amen. How many of you have has God done a miracle in your life? Can I see your hands? Look around, beloved church family. Look around. Look around. You are ornaments. Hallelujah. You are ornaments on the Christmas tree. Amen. You got the red ribbon, the stripes. How many of you have been healed by, by Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. That's the stripes of Lord Jesus. That's the ribbon. Hallelujah. Listen, how the red ribbon is the blood of the Christmas Eve cross. And hallelujah, the light is Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Say we will love your face. Thanks be to God. Thank you, God. For his indescribable. For his indescribable. Yeah. Yeah. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do. You notice what happens at a gift? It just multiplies, right? Yeah. Dear Lord Jesus Christ is saying, all the things that I've done, all the ornaments, all the blessings, all the miracles, all the deliverance, all the breakthrough, all the healing. Dear Lord Jesus Christ is saying, if you believe in me, you will do the works I've been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going back to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Amen? Amen. So what Christmas needs to me, say it with me, gifts. Yes. You see all these gifts underneath the Christmas tree? That's all you. Oh, That's all you. Hallelujah. You are, 
say with me, I am, I am. a gift that keeps on giving. I know you're probably tired, 
But can you imagine how tired Jesus was? Can you imagine how he was when he tried to carry that cross? He was going to beat all the pieces. And yet he still tried to carry that cross as far as he could. And he would have drug it all the way up the hill if he had to because he loved us that much. He never once said no to us, church. Why do we want to say no to him? So I'm going to ask you right now to examine yourself. Make sure you're right before you take this communion. You know, in Matthew, Jesus said to his disciples, he said, this bread that I'm about to give you is my body. This wine that I'm about to give you is my blood. They had no clue what he was talking about. But you do. There's not a person in here that hasn't read the Bible or heard it preached what it meant. It's the bread of life, church. It's his body that he literally went on that cross and died for each and every one of us. So please, if you got anything that's bothering you right now, if you got anything that you're dealing with and you don't know how to fix it, just cry out to him. Ask him, say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I want to be right this Christmas. I want, to, I want to be this Christmas here. I want to be the best Christmas that I've ever had because I'm giving it all to you. Every bit of it. And then when I take communion, I'm going to be a free person. I'm going to be a free person. Because you love me. You love me so. I'm going to ask each and every one of you right now. If you truly are ready to take communion, I'm going to ask everybody to stand up. It's going to be different tonight. I told, I told Pastor that the Holy Spirit just spoke to me today. It's going to take just a little time. I'm going to ask Brother William to come up here with me. He's deacon in, in our church. I want him to help me. But we're going to literally serve you all. But what I want you to do, and it's going to be, and you don't have to be bumped up against each other because of I know everything that's going on. But I want this row, this side here first. I want you to go right back there and start right back there and walk right on and take off for me. Each and every one. And I want you to get a line. You don't have to be touching one another. And I want you to pull the line all the way across here. It might be a couple lines, but we could, I want to go from one end to the other. Yes, go follow. Keep on going. There you go. That's good. Stop right there if you don't care. PJ. Now listen to me. If anybody has to stand down, there's a chair there. Sit there. We'll reach you when we start again.
kind of expand the class just a little bit further before we really, really kind of spread that next a little bit there with us. I want you to look around. You know, we haven't made a complete circle yet, but we're pretty close. Amen. And I thank God for that tonight. Yeah. I do. I do. I thank God for that tonight. I thank, listen, I thank every one of you all for being here. For being here tonight. I know it's late. I know it's snowing out. But I know your heart right now. Amen. I do. Your heart is for Jesus. And if that trumpet sounds, I really believe in all my heart, Pastor, there will be a person left in this building. I really feel that. I believe that. I believe this is the true, the true bunch that's getting ready to go out of here when that trumpet sounds. And I know there will be more. But I really believe they're going to extend your will. As the music's playing, I'm going to ask the way to start that. I'm going this way. We're going to serve you. What I want you to do, I want you to go ahead and open it up. And it takes a little time to open it up. And then I will bless it. Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. 
I do. I know we spend the next half hour, and it could happen before 2021. But I really believe it's about over. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, this is my body that was broken for you. And before they ate the bread, they blessed it. Heavenly Father, we come right now. First of all, we just want to thank you for what you've done for each and every one of us here. We want to thank you, Jesus, for dying on that cross. We want to thank you, Jesus, for going to hell that we don't have to. We want to thank you, Jesus, that we can get to spend eternity with you. And Lord, I really believe every one of us in here has examined ourselves. Because we all mess up each and every day of our life. And we're ready, Lord. We're ready to take your bread because this is the bread of life. And your word says that we are supposed to do this in remembrance of you. Every time we take this, we got to remember what you did for each and every one of us. we got to remember from the very beginning, Jesus, when you came as a babe and when you served your disciples, you told us to serve one another. And then you went to the cross. And then you arose on the third day. And now you're set beside the Father. So Jesus, as we take this bread together right now, we thank you for it. Because this is your body. In Jesus' name. Amen.
let there be light. Let's say it again. Let, let there be light. light. See, right now, the anointing of God through the power of Holy Spirit, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, he has gone into your future. He has gone into your future, and he has prepared a way. And as we light these candles, God is asking of you, whether it's a situation, a circumstance, maybe you have loved ones that went to be with the Lord this past year. Maybe you know a family or friend. Maybe you know a family or friends that... They're not living for Lord Jesus right now. They're running away from God. God wants to see your act of faith as you light a candle here at his given altar. Amen? Can I get an amen? amen? How many of you believe that? That as you come up to his altar and you light this light, and just being thankful to what Lord Jesus Christ, the gift of God, has done already in your life. How many of you believe that when you come up to this altar and you light this candle, that God's anointing power in your life will work miracles beyond your comprehension. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to start. Praise God. We're going to start over here. Don't be crunchy. Y'all pray for her, okay? Y'all pray for her, all right? Sis, all right? Don't, sis Denise, don't, you, you guys pray for her. But we're going to go ahead. We're going to play We're gonna play some songs, some Christmas songs, amen? You take as much time as you want. We got a lot of music ready. Um, but I just want you to know, we love you. We love you. We are God's holy church. We are his holy people. Amen. And beloved church family, I say it with all my heart. Pastor says it all the time. Your leadership encourages you and says it all the time. We need you. Can you, can, can you say that with me? We need you. We need you. This means don't just come to church once a year. Oh, man, you got quiet real quick. Can I get an amen? Amen. Can you make a change for Lord Jesus? Because guess what? You may think that it's insignificant, but all it takes is for another child of God to see your smile. And you know what? That smile may have rebuked whatever the devil's trying to put against them. Amen? Amen. So as we work our way past this altar, remember, just light a candle. We got music playing. Praise God. Um, let's... Uh, Let's just be obedient. If you want to worship at the altar, worship at the altar. But at this time, our Christmas Eve service has concluded. Amen? Amen. Let's pray and then we're going to get into the altar call. Amen? Heavenly Father, as we come together as one body in you, Lord Jesus Christ, oh, Father, we worship you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, as we bless you in closing, as we come to this altar, Father, you heard every beloved child of yours said, let there be light. And Lord Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, and because of your gift, because of your presence in every beloved child, we are the light. And Father, I pray a fresh anointing over every house represented here tonight and everybody on Facebook that's worshiping with us right now, Father. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Lord Jesus Christ. We bless you, and we just say thank you. And it's in Jesus' name. All God's beloved said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.